The U.S. military is charged with protecting the country. The troops are highly trained and disciplined. But in a CBS News exclusive, we have uncovered evidence of deadly gang activity, which the FBI says is threatening national security. Tonight, we bring you part one of our CBS News investigation, Gangs in the Military. Is it good, Juwan? Army Sergeant Juwan Johnson got a hero's welcome while home on leave. I not only love my son, I like the man he was becoming. It was the last time his family saw him alive. When you heard he had died, he was in Germany. He wasn't even in a, in a war zone. He had finished his term in Iraq. He was, I talked to him the day before his death. He said that, my, I'm in the process of discharging out. I'll be home in two weeks. On July 3rd, 2005, Sergeant Johnson came to this park, not far from his base in Germany, to be initiated into the Gangster Disciples, a notorious Chicago-based street gang. He was beaten here by eight other soldiers in a jump-in, an initiation rite like this one common to many gangs. My son never, ever spoke of joining a gang. Johnson died that night from his injuries. He was only 25 years old. His son, Jawan Jr., was born five months later. I feel like I didn't prepare him enough to deal with this, and I should have. But I would have had I known that they were gangs that exist in the military. Evidence of gang culture and gang activity in the military is increasing so much, an FBI report calls it a threat to law enforcement officials and national security. The signs are chilling. Marines in gang attire on Paris Island, paratroopers flashing gang hand signs at a nightclub near Fort Bragg, infantrymen showing off gang tattoos at Fort Hood. It's obvious that, that many of these people do not give up their gang affiliations. Hunter Glass is a retired police detective in Fayetteville, North Carolina, home of Fort Bragg in the 82nd Airborne. He monitors gang activity at the base and across the military. If we weren't in the middle of fighting a war, yes, I think that the military would have, could have a lot more control over controlling this issue. Gang activity clues are appearing in Iraq and Afghanistan, too. Gang graffiti is on blast walls, even Humvees. Kilroy, the doodle made famous by U.S. soldiers, is here, but so is the star emblem of the gangster disciples. The soldier who took these photos told CBS News he's been warned he's as good as dead if he ever returns to Iraq. We represent America. We, we, our demographics are the, are the same. So the same problems that America contends with, we, we oftentimes contend with. The U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Command reported 61 gang investigations and incidents last year, compared to just nine in 2004. But Army officials point out less than 1% of all its criminal investigations are gang-related. These small numbers um, are not reflective of... Um, of a tremendous, pervasive, rampant problem. The rise in gang activity coincides with the increase in recruits with records. Since 2003, 125,000 recruits with criminal histories have been granted what are known as moral waivers for felonies including robbery and assault. Does it matter that I was in a gang or anything? A hidden camera investigation by CBS Denver station KCNC found this recruiter quick to offer the waiver option allowed by regulations. You may have had some gang activity in your past, and every time, okay? And that in itself is not disqualified. Military regulations do not ban members of street gangs. Sergeant Jawan Johnson's family says such a prohibition is long overdue. Just maybe we can save somebody else's child, somebody else's husband, somebody else's father. And I would have loved to have seen him with his child. I really would have. That. So that, that part's hard. A military court this month sentenced two of Jawan Johnson's attackers to prison in one instance for 12 years, in the other six. On tomorrow's CBS Evening News, we'll report on warnings from police that gangs in the military are branching out to America's streets.